Well, uh, let me answer that question with a question. What time is it? <laughs> it's exactly three o'clock. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's been great. Um, we both got in pretty early yesterday morning, so we really haven't had a chance to uh, to do much other than what we're doing. But uh, so far, it's been wonderful, and Telford has been great, and the people are just lovely. They all have weird accents, though. Have you noticed that? Well, I have the weirdest accent. <laughs> well, like, I'm not even from here, as you can tell. Uh, if they're from Telford. Um, but are there, any, are there any Scottish people here? Hell yeah. yeah we're everywhere. Can't get rid of us. How about you, Jen? Like, are you enjoying yourself? Yes, of course. Yeah, no, with Steve. I mean, it, we are tired and confused. But, uh, but that's you. Great. Yeah, no. We haven't seen any of Telford, actually, other than you beautiful people. So that is our experience of Telford so far. So I wanted to ask you guys, like, what brings you back to doing Comic Cons again and again? What is that feeling, or is it is the fan interaction? What is it that brings you back? I am a, um, I started as a theater actor, and there's a really lovely connection that you get with your audience when you're telling stories when you're doing theater, and you don't get that doing voiceover, and it's a way, Comic Cons are a way to connect to your audience and to remind yourself as well how important it is for everybody, and that's a beautiful, because we don't get to, we don't get to see that, we don't get to hear that from people, and it's, uh, you know, when you're working, um, and so it's nice to get that response, to get, to see how it, how it affects people, if that's what you want, right? You want to make a difference and to hear from people that it is making a difference. Or, or just entertaining people is great. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a way to check in. Absolutely. And you agree with well, and, and it's actually, uh, it can be a, a learning experience in yeah. terms of, of how, um, you, a, a lot of times the feedback that we get helps to inform us in terms of what the character means to the player. And a lot of that information gets internalized and the next time we go to work on the character, some of the feedback that we get from people in terms of you know, what, what works, what doesn't work, what they connect with, is information we can use going back into the studio, so. Somebody gave me some feedback about the TV show, constructive <laughs> feedback about the TV show. And I gave it to the showrunner, and I think he's incorporating it. So, wow. something to know. So that's an, an interesting thing. I actually hadn't thought about that before. People informing you, and then informs your work. So are there any elements of feedback that you've received from fans over the years that, that we can see that's informed your work? And any specifics? I know we've been doing it for so long. It's yeah, I, I don't know that. Um, I don't remember exactly. I don't know that there's a specific instance I can cite. I'm sure there is. I just, once I do it, I want to take full credit for it. So. <laughs> but, um, Mine, I thought of that. Yeah, yeah, I thought of that. My brilliant mind. Pure Steve and pure Jen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Pure Steve and pure Jen. Um, looking back on this franchise and this legacy as storytellers, you know, with actors, you're storytellers. What are those feelings you get as people, as humans, like looking back at that? Do you go, wow, I can't believe it? Or is it overwhelming still to think about the impact it's had? Well, I mean, it's, I don't know, overwhelming is probably not the right word. It's, uh, the word I use a lot is surreal, uh, because never in my or anybody else's who is involved in the franchise, Never in our wildest dream. Marty O'Donnell, who is the one who hired both of us, and who was the uh, the guy who cast all the actors in the Bungie games, and also wrote all the music. And he directed us for the first. And directed us, yeah. Bye. He often says that he was their, their fondest hope when Combat Evolved came out that they would sell maybe five or ten thousand copies of the game. That would be a considered a successful outing. Well, they probably sold five or ten thousand in the first day, and and it, it, it blossomed to maybe more, maybe more than that. No, maybe. <laughs> but uh, the the point is, is that, that we had no idea that it was that twenty two years later we would still be here, not only talking about it, but still doing it. It feels much bigger than us, right? I mean, and, and also there were 
thousands of people involved in this production of these games, and so it feels a lot bigger than we are, um, and beyond us in a way, so. And Terrence, let's go back to the beginning for a moment and just talk about sci-fi. Uh, where are you big fans of science fiction growing up, and what kind of sci-fi were you consuming um, as kids or as teenagers? Star Wars. Hell yeah. Star, Star Wars fans here? Yeah. Yes. I've always been, uh, from the time I was a kid, uh, I, was, I was a science fiction fan, I think. Uh, I, I mean, I think of some of the early 50s, 60s, you know, the day the earth stood still, or Forbidden Planet. Uh, but the one that, that was a game changer for me was 2001, which I still think is one of the greatest films ever made in any genre. <clears throat> and, um, I can't do that. It's just so, uh, so, and then when, when the Marty came to approach me about Halo, of course, the, you know, I wasn't a gamer. What, what attracted me to it was the story. And I thought this is a great, very rich storyline that we have here. And uh, I, was, I loved it and loved being the part of it. Did you know, like, you know, I can't do that, Dave. Did you know that the man who played Dave is actually in the Halo TV show? No. Yes. Fun fact. Yes. <laughs> um, what is he? He's Admiral Lurenblur. <laughs> is that right? He's, he's the most powerful Admiral guy. I can't remember what he was saying. He's Admiral Lurenblur. Yes. He was the voice of Al. Yes. Oh. Go back, watch it, look it up. He's t he has a long conversation with Paul Z. Ooh, I can't wait. Yeah. When you were, uh, you know, back in your forward years as, as younger actors starting out, um, what were your hopes and sort of dreams, I guess, starting out? I mean, obviously you can't predict what's going to happen in your career and where you go, but was there something specific you wanted to do? Like, be on stage, be a voice actor, be in science fiction, was there anything like that that you focused on? When I started out, I was a theater actor, so I don't know, you know, I probably thought Broadway would be nice. Probably something small like that, that's probably, or actually, let me go back. I think that I was hoping that I could make a living as an actor. That was my main goal. It wasn't anything as specific as that. It was, wow, I hope I get to do this for a career. Not have to wait to the person. And, and not have to have another job, yeah. I hope I can devote my energy and time to this. Is there anything you'd say to your younger selves now? to sort of like encourage you and kind of like keep you going? Because I'm sure there are some people out here that want to follow your footsteps, come storytellers, actors like yourselves. Like what would you say to your younger selves? Um, I can think of a lot of things, none of which I want to share with anybody. <laughs> Amazing. A, a big part of being a performer is rejection. And to, and it's, you know, people are going to say this to you over and over again, don't take it personally, it's not about you, which feels really difficult when it is you, you know? Um, but still, to this day, we get rejected way more than we get for, for voiceovers, way more than we get them, to this day. To this day. Um, so get, get used to it, get comfortable with it, and don't take it personally is the biggest advice that I can give to any performer starting out. It's not about you. It's Actors about have you. such a difficult, uh, because it requires two things of you. It, it requires you to be sensitive and vulnerable, and at the same time, it requires you to be thick-skinned. Yeah. And, and, and the two seem, obviously, work against each other. But you need to be vulnerable in order to let these emotions come in so that you can express them. And like Jen said, you need to be tough because 99 times out of 100, they're going to say no thank you, and you got to walk away and you know, not jump off a cliff. <laughs> um, Jane, I was watching a YouTube video uh, that, that made, made, made me laugh. Uh, it was some of your outtakes. And um, that you can't stick it. That's the one! Yeah. I love that. Oh my yeah. God. Are there any other lines, though, apart from this, that, you, that have been kind of ridiculous? Okay, that you thought, how am I going to get through this? So many, so many. I have so much technical jargon that so much of what I say is a joke. 
uh, to me. I mean, it was so difficult to be like, what? <laughs> what? Um, I think there was one, I think there's another outtake about wildcats. Right. Joe Staten, who you may have heard of, um, who was also, you know, one of the writers in the beginning, uh, and I went to college together at Northwestern University, and we were the wildcats. So I swear he threw that in. Wildcat destabilization. I had trouble with that. Not just, not just wildcat destabilization. Wildcat destabilization. It's difficult to say. Yeah. Wild, wildcat? Is that, a, is that a, a military term that I don't... Anyway. Oh, but you, Stephen, like, is there any... I mean, you could be poignant or funny. All Steve says is... Yo, what's up? All I say Cortana. Cortana. Cortana? Cortana. Cortana. Um, the only, the only yes. thing that comes to mind uh, no. is... Uh, right. Yeah, all of those. What? You try it. Go. Um, now. When we were doing Halo 3, for a while. Uh, the scene where Master Chief finally does away with Guilty Spark, uh, and we, we 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 did that, and I I happen to know I'm friends with the guy who's the voice of the Spark, Tim the Dobber, who does a great job. But um, Tim, like Guilty Spark, can be annoying sometimes <laughs> in real life. <laughs> Just kidding, Tim. Uh, so when it came time to to um, for for that scene, um, Marty was with me, and we riffed on it a little bit, and and the riff was because. Part of the initial inspiration for me as the voice of Master Chief was Clint Eastwood, when Clint Eastwood was doing all the spaghetti westerns and the Dirty Harry movies, and the movies where he didn't say much, but every time he did, somebody usually got killed. So that's where I was coming from. So I, the, the line, there's a, there's a scene in, in one of the Dirty Harry films where he's facing down the bad guy, and there's been a whole lot of shooting and all this, and, and Clint Eastwood says, no. you know, in all the confusion, I lost count. Was that five bullets or six? Do you feel lucky, punk? So I did that scene as I'm getting ready to kill Guilty Spark. And I thought I did a pretty good job. And they, uh, everybody, <laughs> cutting on the floor. Well, well, I never saw it again. Most of the stuff we create Never on the floor. <laughs> the humor is right. Not funny. Yeah. Um, guys, we're going to hand it over to the floor in a second. Is there anyone who's got a question? Hands up if you've got one right over here. Right here. Okay, last, uh, one last question before we hand over to you guys. Finally, um, what would you, we already talked about what you would say to yourself, you know, going back. What would you say to anyone out here that wants to follow your footsteps? and do what you guys have done. Don't. Find another line of work. No. Oh, <laughs> the first thing to do, if you want to do voiceover specifically, is to take an acting class. And to take a beginning acting class because you need to understand how a director is going to talk to you and what they want from you. So that's the best way to get started, is to under learn the language and what people need and want. And also how to open up and be vulnerable and to uh, be able to tell a story um, in that way. So that's the first thing I would recommend. Yeah. Um, and you know, li and listen to other people's work. Uh, you know, and, and in the beginning, imitate it. Um, and, and not just uh, don't let you, you, you don't let, uh, limit yourself to one particular field, like video game voice or you know, look at commercial work, look at video games, look at Steve animation. Steve and I both do a lot of commercial work. I sell tacos, yeah. Steve sells cars. Yeah. Like, that, we, I mean, that we do was, a lot of it as well. Up until Halo, that was your bread and butter. We do a lot of healthcare and healthcare. credit unions. I'm the voice of credit unions for some reason. Um, yeah, take, take, in, take a beginning voiceover class, again, just to get familiar with the microphone and see how it feels. And, and, how somebody who's directing you is going to talk to you. Um, but also, yes, imitation. I, the reason that I got cast as Princess Peach and Toad in the Mario Brothers is because I could imitate what the person did before me, and that's exactly what they wanted. They didn't want me to create something new. They wanted me to 
imitate what this person had done and gone on and, and, and build on it, but still that's where they wanted me to start, right? And if you can do that and understand how to use your voice to get there, that's you're golden, and then you can build on that, right? So, yeah, that's great, that's great advice. But if any of you are really, really good, go away. We don't <laughs> Learn how to imitate Steve Down. Find some other line of work. Be an accountant, something. When you're talking about your other your other jobs there, I was thinking I would love to hear the Master Chief sell me tacos. I think I would love to hear that. So meaty. I need a taco. I did a lot. Mine is a, mine is for this chain called Taco Time in the Seattle area. And it's a lot of, uh, their key phrase at the time was fresh alicious. So I said a lot of fresh alicious. Love that. Yeah. But how would Cortana say fresh just like that? Fresh probably. Like, yeah. Maybe a little lower and more pissed off. Yeah. Though. Yeah. How would Master Chief, how would Master Chief say fresh alicious? Fresh alicious. Fresh alicious. But say it, say it how Cortana would say it. Fresh alicious. <laughs> Steve's imitation of Cortana. <laughs> Airy and also kind of has a southern dialect too sometimes. That's how, well, that's how I hear it. Yeah. Like I said. Blah, 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 blah. I love how Steve's whole demeanor changed. We got all kind of like, hey. And um, guys, please give a round of applause before we go to the fan questions. Thank you very much.